MMB Commissioner James Showalter joins me now to talk a little bit about what this board budget forecast means. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So Commissioner, let's begin with the message of this forecast, both in the short term and more importantly in the long term. They seem to be conflicting messages. Mm. The, this budget forecast shows that we're in a holding pattern, that the good news that we released last December uh, is holding up. There's only about a 1% adjustment in this forecast based upon slightly better revenues, slightly lower spending. And as a result, we have about a $323 million balance. Mm -hmm. But that all goes away pretty much right away. We have a lot of obligations that are outstanding, a lot of uh, reserves that we've started to replenish and now we're completely replenished, and even more, about $2.4 billion in aid payment shifts to schools that need to be done. So the ending balance here is zero and we're in about the same shape as we started. Zero balance, a little bit better news, uh, the economy's tracking. And without getting too deep in the woods on the actual numbers, let's talk a little bit more about maybe some of the trends, um, particularly with this biennium's budget. The DFL leadership said in those post-news conferences that the GOP, GOP plan really essentially did nothing to impact the actual biennium's budget. It's fair to say that the GOP is going to counter saying it had everything to do with it. Mm -hmm. What's your impression? What we try to do in the forecast is take a look at the economy, uh, actual experience and programs to see what's happening. And those are the kinds of factors that we roll into these estimates. Uh, in the case of health care, what we're finding is that our previous estimates to significant changes in our Medicaid program, allowing single adults to go get health care, well, not as many people who are uninsured are taking advantage of that program. It's not necessarily a change in policy since that end of session. It's really what were our estimates of how many people would come out and do that. Um, you know, that's more behavior. Uh, that's more uh, what's happening in the economy. Okay, so that's um, an argument then that these projections aren't always aren't always spot on. Absolutely. We uh, always know that these are estimates. These are forecasts uh, taking lots of calculations into account, lots of behavioral assumptions, and no person out there really knows the future. We certainly know we don't. And it was stated that this is the first time the school shifts have been paid back since 2006. So let's, let's look a little bit long term. If budget surpluses continue, would it be your preference that these school shifts get paid back at, maybe at an expedited pace, or do you think it should be a slow and steady payment process? What we have right now in current law is taking any forecast balance that's available. So we don't have like a coupon where we say, well, this year we're going to pay $200 million, next year we're going to pay $200 million. We really only repay those shifts when we've got money. I you know that, that process has worked for us. But I you know, appreciate people looking at this and saying, well, oh, we don't always have good balances. So you know, that's something I think to look at in the future of how far we want to go, how we want to do it each year so that we can uh, address this uh, rel reliably. Okay, let's talk about the out years. And you stated again, you've stated it time, uh, in the past as well, that there are significant structural issues with our budget. So what would you like to see? What kind of reforms do you think are necessary to make it a less volatile system? Well, I think trying to make it a less volatile system will probably set us up because truly we're in a volatile economy. We're in a volatile time with changes happening at the federal level, something that we talked about extensively in this forecast. You can't predict all those things, so the volatility is going to be there. What we need to be better at is having management ability to deal with that. <laughs> probably watching our reserves, making sure we keep our reserves at the levels that they're at or grow them bigger making sure that we invest in good information, tracking what's happening in our programs and our economy very well, and ultimately getting back to a place where we have a structural balance. You know, we were able to balance the last biennial budget largely through the one-time sources, more shifts, tobacco, revenue bonds. Those don't happen again. They're a one-time event. So we're going to have to find revenues we're going to have to make adjustments to the budget in order to bring it into balance in the next biennium. And you're talking a little bit about finding revenues, and yet the GOP contend that what they're doing is working. And where do you see the relationship, this, this trend of the economy growing and potential tax cuts, particularly corporate tax cuts that the, the Republicans would like to enact? Mm -hmm. Good question. You know, I think what we're always looking at is uh, a, that debate about what's the right tax policy what's the right tax level, what really uh, works. 
and I'll, I'll, I'll leave that for uh, others to debate in detail. I think from a fiscal standpoint, though, what's really critical is that we have some predictability, that we aren't changing things every year in, in this large way so that businesses know what's coming, that schools know what's coming, that we all can do our work and probably do it as well as we can, not trying to take into account all the risks that the state government might change the rules of the game next month, next year. It's fair to say that the average Minnesotan doesn't really understand the complexities of the budget. I barely understand them. So uh, let's just, I would like your opinion. Do Minnesotans, can Minnesotans feel good about this budget going into the out years mm -hmm. and, and that their, that their um, best interests are being protected? And I think what's important for uh, everyone to understand is just how sincerely and closely held, uh, there's lots of beliefs here, and so the Capitol is just a great place for those clashes. Uh, and they meet out that dispute, and one way or another that gets done. It's time for the executive branch to implement those uh, policies, and that's what we've been doing. You know, the forecast really shows that things are going a little bit better than we expected. But in the end, you know, we're protecting the taxpayer money, we're giving everyone the information that they need to make decisions going forward, and it's going to be lots of disputes going ahead. Those aren't going to go away. But I think Minnesota state government continues to work really hard to make sure that it does the best job possible. Okay, Commissioner, thanks for analyzing the budget with us. We appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thank you.